Why was I spared? What am I supposed to do with my life? The first season was really about finding ourselves. I'm sure he did some really embarrassing things as a little boy, huh? <laughs> you mean like when he discovered himself? <laughs> it was fun doing that show, and the first year was exciting and new. We did so many bizarre things on the show, and yeah. things that other shows weren't doing. With that said, I now pronounce you drunk and disorderly. You may now kiss my ass. <laughs>
Uh, I was hoping somebody had. I think the reason I got cast was just a big, gigantic, cosmic accident. The character of Mimi was not meant to be a regular. Originally, that was going to be a character role just to highlight what Drew was going through, how tough this job was. Mimi's introduction is a really good scene, and I think that's really why we were picked up as a show. <clears throat> Two years in phone sales, darkroom assistant, <laughs> reader for the blind. I'm also single, if that helps. Not me. <laughs> but she was so funny, and the relationship was such a great adversarial, because everybody's got that office nemesis, that person they just can't stand, that bully that they have to deal with, and that's what Mimi was. What brings you here, Mimi? Oh, I guess it's your cloven hooves. The pilot was considered a dead project. What do you call it? Everybody on this, the word on the street was, this thing ain't going nowhere, the cast is no good. When you're doing a pilot, it's very nerve-wracking, and everyone is trying to you know, they wanted to be picked up. I said, I said to Michael Lesek, the director, let's bring the cast in on the weekend when there's no pressure and just goof around and get everybody relaxed. That weekend, everybody came in and I said to everybody, you guys make each other laugh, but you refuse to look at each other. And I asked them all, I asked them all to look at each other because they were like looking this way and talking lines, doing lines with it. And when they started looking at each other, they started cracking each other up. And when they started doing that, it was infectious. Shh, I saw this on the Nature Channel. I mean, when we would do the show, or when we would do a scene the third time and change a lot of stuff around and actually have fun doing the scene and laugh, uh, it just looked like we were really good actors. Yeah. But we are actually just having fun. Bruce Helford, the producer, was always on set and really talked to the actors. He was really, really good with the actors and would really help with jokes. And even on show night, you know, if you weren't getting it, Bruce could clearly communicate how to do it, which a lot of people don't. Sometimes we would genuinely laugh at each other, like, you know, like people doing a scene together and actually finding each other amusing. And he would take those takes. And it, it uh, uh, was interesting because we were really laughing. I mean, it wasn't a character of thing. We were genuinely laughing. If she dumps you, it could be really awkward. If you dump her, there'll be nobody to comfort her because everyone will be too busy trying to catch the monkeys that are flying out of my butt. <laughs> Here's another great thing from the pilot episode, from the first episode. Uh, Bruce likes to do multiple pilots to cover all his bets. <laughs> That's right. That's how optimistic he is. He won't put this, he won't just bet the red. He has to bet red and black and, and hope the and zero green. doesn't come up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> In the meantime, I'm like a crazy man. I'm running back and forth to be everywhere I need to be because I, 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 I made a dedication and a commitment to Drew. And I remember being put off a lot of times going, Wow, this guy's doing another show. He doesn't care whether my what happens to me. I was actually working or sleeping because I, I wasn't I getting any sleep or anything else, trying to go back and forth. They screwed him by putting them both on it. And like, they put them against each other. And one had to beat the other. And, and Drew, of course, would kick the other show's butt. Well, I mean, you know. Yeah, you did it on purpose. <laughs> Warner Brothers recommended me to Bruce, and I came on on the second episode of the show. And by the time we got to the end of the episode, and it was Drew and Kate, Kristen Miller, in the kitchen, I just, I fell in love with him. I wasn't familiar with him before. And I took one look at him, and I thought, you know, he's a person who you'd want to be his girlfriend, and he's a person who you'd want as your best friend. The curse of his life, he's always the best friend, never the, you know, never the lover. What, is there somebody else? Yeah. There's Drew! <laughs> Drew, the character, was the ultimate optimist. No matter what happened to him, I'll get him next time. Yeah, baby! Woo! Woo! All right! Woo. Head of personnel! Oh, yeah! I've waited so long! That's not what I said. I said personal assistant. I know what you said. I just wanted to feel good for two lousy stinking sons. I think what made the show was Drew was such a nice guy yeah. that we wanted the show to work for him. So yeah. there was never any stealing focus or anything. It was That's all true. giving to Drew, you know. And he was just a nice guy. You wanted to do that. Not only to us, to the crew. And I mean, he was just a good guy. He was appealing and he was a friend. And we had a nice relationship. I always felt that Drew and I had chemistry. And he was always sweet with me. You know, if you think I didn't like that, you're wrong. I don't think our characters are really that much different than how we are. No, no, no. So. Wow. You almost sound like you're singing when you talk. You should hear me sing. It almost sounds like I'm talking. 
first year, Oswald was fairly bright. And then as, uh, as people collect the DVDs, they'll see that I become increasingly stupid until there's a point where I just thought, why did anybody give this guy a license? Can I drive one of those little cars on the parade? <laughs> I really didn't have a character. You I really basically just did myself. You ended up having a character, not the first year, but you ended up having, he was like a real- I was creepy. Yeah, yeah you are a creep, was, yeah. yeah. I'd be happy to help you. I'm Kate O'Brien, <laughs> and by the way, let me tell you what a pleasure it is to meet a fellow businesswoman, someone who's broken through the glass ceiling and showered the rest of us with the pointy shards of her success. Can you see me? But I was the stupid one, and you were the smart one. That's true. Yeah. And, and then, then we, we switched reversed. it. Totally yeah. switched it around. I want in on this. What kind of drugs are they testing? Smart drugs. They got drugs that make you smarter? What do they do? <laughs> There's a fine line between stupid and crazy, though. Uh, I've never found it, but it's there. I could take them. Does anyone doubt I could take them? No. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> Couldn't have a show without a sitcom without a chick. Right, so we came up with the idea of Kate, who was someone that, because we both, in both of our lives, we had women who we had like these long crushes on who were like friends and didn't see us as anything different than just friends, but we were always like, oh God, I love her. So we came up with the idea of Kate. I went from the first audition to three more rehearsals to the network test in the same outfit, which was brown boots, brown corduroys, and a pink long sleeve t shirt. Actors get um, superstitious about. Um, you go in for a meeting, and if they ca call you back, you feel like part of it's the outfit. The producers must have been really tired of seeing that outfit. I just like found that outfit and it stuck with it. I had just done um, an episode of Seinfeld, and when I went to do the network test at ABC, I think they were nervous that I was too green. And so I thought, oh, let me see if I can get the Seinfeld tape. They were waiting to see before they'd accept Krista, they wanted to see a tape of her Seinfeld. She had done one Seinfeld. Yeah, because we like, she did have like, a lot of experience. Oh my God, I hope they love it. I hope she did good. We never did see She it. had to call up Larry David or something like and that, or the, one of the writers, like personally. And if I see Larry David now, he always says, I made her career, because he did. I said, Larry, can I just take the rough cut and I'll bring it right back? And it was when Seinfeld was so huge, they weren't letting the tapes out. And he said, okay. She had to drive in like five o'clock traffic or something to personally get it from there, from the office, and drive it over to deliver it to us, and she, like in a panic. I ran over to ABC, and um, I was just so strung out, and handed it, like broadcast news, just like, here's the tape. And then Bruce Halford called me up and said, you got it. She and she was really the only person really right for the role. She, yeah. she was a tomboy, and she looked like the kind of person who would fit in with these three guys. Yeah, she would actually really, want to hang she out really was a tomboy with, with three tomboy. guys. Um, and attractive. Come on, guys, let's give Drew some space. We'll go down to the Warsaw. I'll explain a little something to Lewis. I told you women don't think those things are sexy. <laughs> she was one of the guys and friends with all these guys and sarcastic and always getting in trouble for being mean. And um, not, not so much mean, but like putting her foot in her mouth and saying the wrong thing and um, yelling at people. So that is fun to do. No need to respond. Just ignore her, let it go. Oh, and you must be the trash that got the job. Don't get up. I don't want to see where his hand is. <laughs> get her! There was a little bit weir of weirdness in the first season because it was like, like there was this like the four regulars and then Kathy was like this extra added on one. She became a regular and then we realized that she was completely a member of the family. Hey, Drew. And Mimi. <laughs> ah, we came by to see if you wanted to go out drinking, but obviously you both have already been. <laughs> but in the beginning, we gave her a character to really play, and also her approach, when she once said this to me, and I totally got it, was that she played Mimi as a spoiled child. I totally understood exactly everything she was doing from that point. I understood her character better when she told me what she was doing than when I was writing it. Whoops. Talking about your butt. <laughs> Anyone ever mistake you for a woman? I'll have you know that men find me. Yeah, I me. know. They find you with the lights out, or they find you at last call, or they find you blocking the view of the woman they want to hit on. Oh, 
you're really on today. I'll come back later. <laughs> Kate was so deep. It was like everything in her life she wanted to take on anybody, she took on Drew Carey. That's it. They're both nine years old. The, this is the way they live their lives. He thinks he doesn't, but they're very immature and they're really just children and it's about finding the child inside. All this stuff is just like, it's just very unprofessional. Don't touch the troll! <laughs> Is that what your mom used to say to your dates? <laughs> I found this picture of a woman in a, in a uh, high school yearbook, yearbook yeah. and she was an art teacher, <laughs> and she had like bizarre makeup and this huge hat with the tassels and everything else. I said, this is Mimi, this is it, right? I think of makeup as my palette and my face as my canvas. <laughs> Julie Ryan was our costume designer who worked on the pilot and continued through the life of the show who came up with the Mimi costumes each week. I enjoyed the, the clothing, they were like costumes. They always referred to me like a, clown you know she's like she could join the circus one of my favorite things to do when i took people on a tour of the drew carey stage was to bring them into wardrobe because you would see these floor-to-ceiling racks that were right in front and they were just filled with these colorful creations for me it looked like someone had vomited up a rainbow it was just whoosh, all over the wall it was shocking i would kind of hide and i wouldn't let anyone see me and then i'd come out <laughs> the sun go down on me. One of the characters who wasn't a regular but was around a lot on the first season especially was Katie Silverstone. Oh, look at that. Your whole head is blushing. That's so cute. <laughs> when, we, when we first went on the air, here we had a pilot about a guy with a bunch of guy friends, one tomboy girlfriend, and one crazy woman. And so Drew has that general likability for women, but they were worried it wasn't enough. So we thought, we better get somebody in there who, a girlfriend for him, so there's a little bit of a love interest that, that will make him shine clearly in the eyes of women, because if this woman adores him, how great must he be? The beginning of our relationship and the way they, the way Bruce Helford and the other writers set up the problems for us were like we weren't allowed to date, but we were attracted to each other. Isn't there any way we could see each other? I'm a director of personnel. It looks like I'm playing favorites. If I date you, I'll have to date everybody. <laughs> It became fun, and also it became fun, like, me getting to pursue him. They wrote her so that she goes after what she wants, but it's not um, sort of antagonistic or aggressive. She's obviously uh, taking a shine to him, and it doesn't happen to her often enough so that she's going to let it go by. I had a dream about you last night. I had a dream about you last night. You were on fire, and I put you out with a big hose. <laughs> I think the Drew Carey Show was one of those shows that you could come home and watch after you worked a long, hard day, and it was funny, and it could distract you, but it was clever. Oh, yeah, she wants some Drew Carey bad. <laughs> a lot of people tell me they are fans of the show that we obviously had chemistry as a cast, and I think that's what people really, you know, dig. You could feel with the Drew Carey Show what was going on behind the scenes when you watched the actors having a good time. Bite me. Bite me, doughboy. Bite me, jackass. I think that still just says it all, don't you? I was happy to be a part of it. I never thought anything of, of it except it was a fun sitcom and we just wanted to have laughs. <laughs>